Our goal for creating the sounds of the D50 was really to create something new. We didn't want to duplicate what anybody was doing. We didn't want to just create, you know, sampled sounds, but we wanted to create a new kind of hybrid sound where you had the, the motion of the synthesis, but with really unique PCM sounds that you could combine and create these hybrid textures that didn't exist before. It was hard for Roland to get people really interested in analog synthesizers in the 80s. Roland wanted to do something unique. And so I remember uh, going over there and there was a lot of anticipation when they were about to show us uh, the D50. Uh, Mr. Kikimoto and the team, you know, unveiled the whole idea of LA synthesis and, you know, we're like, LA, what is LA? And he's explaining linear arithmetic. And, and so we had a whole day uh, when I was there uh, and, we, and just explaining the technical aspects and diagrams and, you know, that this thing was going to be life changing. And, and we're like, but what does it sound like? You know? <laughs> and we're kind of struggling to, you know, st uh, structures and partials and tones and all of this stuff. And it was all new, but I was just dying, you know, to, to hear what this thing was going to sound like. And so it was super exciting to be part of that team and to be, you know, seeing my ideas and, and you know, I, I would give them some ideas. And they'd come back and they'd, they'd show me code that they did based on that idea. There was a point where we were really struggling because, you know, the reverb wasn't sounding that great. The chorus wasn't, it, it was sounding very weak. There was a lot of digital noise and, and uh, it, it was very ugly sounding in development. And so there was a moment where all the teams submitted their latest code and they built a new EEPROM uh, that had the new operating system and we booted it up and it sounded amazing. And it was, it was literally like a moment where I was like, just what ha just happened? This is incredible. This sounds great. What did you do? Oh, I finished this, uh, I finished the reverb and you were never supposed to judge what it sounded like before. It was just a temporary code or <laughs> so all these concepts were brand new because I was used to working on analog synths. And so, so hearing like just how the software, uh, when it's done right and it's optimized and, and the algorithms all come together and all of these things came together at once, it was like, wow, this, this is like the D50. So that was, uh, yeah, that was a great moment. And, uh, and I reference that moment many times in the development we do at Spectrosonics because uh, that happens still to this day. You know, you're, you're working on something and it might not be quite there and then, but then it can, it can turn into something else and then it, there's a, there can be a moment where it just, it comes together. It was, it was incredibly gratifying to have been able to work on this and then uh, the sounds that I had created to see that the, the reaction that people had to them, that was definitely the strongest reaction that I'd ever gotten to any sounds that I'd ever made. And um, so it was an honor to, to be that person to, to introduce it. And, and it, was, it was a blast. It was really, really fun. That's actually, because, there was, because all of these people were in the audience, that's actually how my session career started. <laughs> because I had the only D50 uh, for about six months. So everybody that was in the audience, if you wanted a D50 on your record, you had to call me. Because <laughs> I had the only one, because we were still finishing it. And um, so that was how I, how I started to work with a lot of uh, artists and um, you know, Michael Jackson and people like that. And um, yeah, so that was, that was a, it was a great moment for me personally, uh, as well as, as, you know, getting to be part of history.